So I'm going to start out with what does local government control? You remember from the uh, environmental conservation law that says that local governments have control over tax revenue uh, from ad valorem. And it turns out that at this point in time, local governments have two revenue sources from gas. One is the ad valorem tax. The other is any fees that they would charge for ancillary activities uh, associated. But uh, of course, the DEC is the one charging the main fee for, um, for the gas wells and the gas permit. It turns out that the state um, does not have ad valorem. The only f revenue the state currently has is a fee structure. And the state is working uh, with their advisory committee to determine how, uh, what is the best way to receive revenue, earn revenue from the, from the gas industry. So when we talk about ad valorem, one of the things that's important to notice is that ad valorem only works for the municipality that has the gas well. If you happen to be a municipality adjacent and don't have a gas well in your municipality, um, you may see many of the impacts, but do not have a revenue source at the, uh, unless there is a severance tax or something added into this. We'll spend a bit of time on the subsequent slides going into more into ad valorem tax, but I will just, uh, the ad valorem process, but I will say that the methodology was set up by uh, ORPS. Uh, back in 1978, uh, of course, it was a different type of gas that they were looking at, and they uh, went through a pro they hired a, a firm to determine what would be, be the best way to assess the value of gas. And that, uh, as I mentioned, was done in 1978, long before anyone knew of shale gas, and that process is uh, manipulated each year, and I'll talk about that in a minute, how that happens. But it turns out that the local government's control over... Um, the tax revenue from ad valorem is a simple math calculation. The amount of assessment that's told to you by the state is multiplied by your tax rate that you've developed at your town, and the revenue is the product of that, and that's all the control that local governments have. Um, the unit production value, which is a key part of this, um, of the assessment uh, value, uh, is multiplied by the number from the meter, and that is how the assessment is calculated. So, so far you see it's not rigorous math. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the UPV is not calculated for shale gas and has not been, so any estimates as to how much revenue uh, municipalities will receive from shale gas is purely that, an estimate, because that number has not been determined yet. As uh, Carol mentioned, the meters are uninspected, and the meter readings are self-reported and unverified. Um, I know Jay hates me to say this, but I'd love to be able to tell the assessment office what my assessment would be worth, because, and I, apparently the gas industry has that luxury. So the UPV formula, the unit production value formula, is um, was developed in 1978, and it was developed for non-shale gas. And the type of gas that they were getting at that time is was from uh, pocket formations in sandstone and limestone. And it turns out the decline curve for that gas is actually fairly steady production for five plus years before it starts to slide off slightly. It turns out that for shale gas, the most production is the minute they hide a frack and then it drops significantly after that. And so there's a whole different way of looking at uh, calculating the unit production value when you're talking about shale gas versus non-shale gas. And of course, there are different costs of production. You can just imagine if you're drilling a, a vertical well versus one that goes down and then, and then turns and runs for a mile. There's a much different cost, as well as containment ponds for water that are going to be used for fracking, a whole fleet of fracking, fracking trucks, and the list goes on. There's another interesting part of the UPV formula, which I'll get into in just a second, but I just want to mention that there's a formula, part of the formula that's a discount rate and it's of 17.5% is the minimum. And for competing industries, that rate is eight to 10%. So a uh, question begs to be asked as to why this industry has such a high discount rate. And I'm hoping that when the, uh, the assessment office, or the, excuse me, ORPS, looks over this uh, formula, they will take that into account. So this is the formula that uh, Carol actually did a great job of putting into a slide, and we've synthesized uh, many pages into just this graph. Spent a little time just to get an appreciation of what's happening here. Uh, first, we're talking about cash flow. So there's production income, and as you may be able to appreciate, the price of gas goes up and down, and the amount of revenue you receive will go up and down accordingly. 
the uh, state uses a five-year uh, average, so you don't get the direct impact from one year to the next. But needless to say, the production income will go down as the price of gas goes down. Um, I also just mentioned that it's possible for the industry to manipulate that price by uh, closing off um, production and increasing with with the same demand to increase price. So there's um, industry has a lot of control over that that number. Then production costs, and the, there's a list of a number of things that are that are there. This is actually fairly standard formula for any type of income property to go um, with income minus cost to help come up with a net cash flow part of the assessment uh, process. And then down below is the denominator, which has a base rate of uh, not less than 17.5%. This is the discount rate I mentioned earlier. And so as you can see, the higher the value in the denominator, the lower the uh, product will be at the end, the quotient at the end. And then that's plus the uh, current average yearly rate from the U.S. Federal Reserve, which is a known amount. And one of the things that um, is not manipulated in this process is actually a firm number. And so the unit of production value is the quotient of net cash value divided by discount rate. And um, if you have further questions, which I hope you will, um, I brought along our best, my best friend, Jay Franklin, to uh, work you through this as he's uh, spent a lot of time on this. I want to talk briefly about uh, the, the process for the towns receiving um, ad valorem tax and how that fits in with when a uh, production or when actual gas well construction starts. So if gas well construction starts in year one, uh, there are a lot of, uh, there's a little bit of time spent in putting in the excess roads, putting in the well pad, getting the uh, well uh, drilling rig on site, drilling the well, hydrofracking it, and then determining that you actually want to connect a pipeline to it. After all that is done, then you can actually start producing uh, gas. If all that happens in year one, then um, you may get some production at the end of year one. This was reported to the state. And that's reported to the state by, I believe, uh, May. Is that right, Jay? April. By April of the following year. So you have one year's worth of production that's reported in April uh, of the following year. Again, self-reported. The um, ORPS will do the product of the UPV that's set up for that year times the amount of gas that's been reported, and that will tell the local assessor how much to add to the assessment roll. So the local assessor does that. I believe that happens in May. And so it's ready for school taxes that come out in, um, in October. And, uh, and that is, so that schools will actually see revenue when the, in the year two. But the county and villages and towns will, will not see any revenue until year three. And that is under the best and most optimistic conditions. You could uh, conceivably uh, understand that a number of gas wells will be drilled to make sure they have enough uh, production ready to be hook up a, a gas line before anything starts. So you can have a, several years of construction in your community be long before you ever see any revenue at the local level. Uh, this is an important um, fact that we need to understand as local officials and the state needs to understand and why we proposed making some changes like severance taxes and so on later on. So let me just talk about that um, mixing of other taxes. We, the committee is recommending that the state not have the local taxpayers or even the state taxpayers held accountable or responsible for any of the upfront cost on this. There is a cash flow that takes place. The state can actually receive money before any construction begins through the, permit, through the permitting process, through a permit fee, and that's a great way to get some revenue to help share with the local government, so as you're going to see the bulk of the cost up front. Then when it comes to severance tax, every state except for Pennsylvania and New York has severance taxes of some value. That severance tax can be levied every quarter, so we're only talking about a delay of, of no more than six months whenever uh, revenue is actually received from the state by a severance tax. And that money, again, could be distributed locally. So we have, there are opportunities by a proper uh, revenue sharing schedule to help keep the local taxpayers and the state taxpayers whole during this process. I spent a little bit of time, and this is just a summary of the time lag. Um, I will say that 
there, there may be reasons, there can be reasons for production to be delayed. Um, some of it could be because of the price of gas. Some of it could be because they're not gathering lines and uh, so on to, to connect. Many reasons. Um, so just because someone has a drill permit to drill in your town doesn't mean that uh, you're going to be running to the bank next year. Um, you need a plan for this, and uh, this is the forewarning, I guess. So I wanted to just show um, the effect of some assumptions and what it can do to your revenue. Uh, this is um, a well that's producing 1 million cubic feet, 1 million, excuse me, 1 billion cubic feet of gas, which is the amount of um, uh, gas that would be under the best conditions in Pennsylvania. And this is at the start of production, not as the decline curve goes, goes on. The estimated unit of production value um, is currently 9.12 for other formations. So Marcellus Shale and Utica Shale would currently fall under other formations at this point in time. I will point out that this number has recently been released. This is for, this will be the, the upcoming uh, value for UPV. It was $9.80 last year. And you can see the effect of the drop in price for one year on that, um, on that value. Gives you an estimated market value of 9120000 and then you multiply by the tax rate and those other revenues from that well. So this is uh, our spreadsheet. Hopefully that those are the same numbers that are up there. I will uh, point out that actually uh, there is a bit of information from Pennsylvania, and they are uh, actually running into... Uh, 600 excuse me I have one too many zeros I'll go back and so th this is uh, this is what we're seeing in Pennsylvania on one year one year uh, under, uh, one year's worth of production from a new well in New York, in Pennsylvania, they can run farther than a mile with their laterals because um, they do not have a one a 640 acre um, limit for the unit, and they are running farther. So in New York State, this would be a very optimistic number for sure. Um, you, there are a number of assumptions you can make. Um, I'm going to make the assumption that uh, we're going to change this to two thirds because we're uh, where the shale is thinner and we're not able to run as far of a uh, lateral. And now you can see how the tax changes with that. Um, it is possible for actually the gas uh, company, as they've done in some neighboring counties. We've been, uh, I've been speaking with people from both Tioga and from Shenango County, where the because of the price of gas has gone down, they've actually curtailed production, and this number can be much less. And so the take home I would have for any elected officials that are here is that you shouldn't take this money to the bank. You shouldn't put, make it operational. You should be looking at this as one-time money and use it for one-time expenses. Um, if you try to build it into your budget, you may be in trouble. Um, I guess I'll just leave it at that. If you were to take, this year we lost uh, roughly uh, 70 cents in the value of the unit production value. If this coming year has the price of gas remaining low because of the number of wells that have been brought online, um, we would probably lose $1.40 next, so we can change that value too. And that'll show you the effect of uh, the low price on gas. This is, uh, none of these are hard and fast, but these are, um, the, I explained to you the assumption, these are the calculations that, that the assessment office would do and you would do uh, for determining your revenue, and this is the amount of revenue from one well um, that's producing this amount. And this is the first year. The amount of production goes down roughly uh, a th a half to, uh, to two thirds in the second year and continues on from there. The good news is is that um, the gas drilling gas companies will most likely be adding more wells. They won't just have one line, one well online to keep their gathering lines full, so that this will have some multiplier effect. And with that, I'm going to go back to the PowerPoint, and we're going to go back to Carol.
Sorry, I had one last slide. This is real quick. You can stay up here, Carol. This is actually um, a histogram of uh, new wells, wells that are less than 90 days old from Pennsylvania, showing the amount of output they're getting per day. Um, and if we were at 3,000, uh, 3, then we would be, for the full year, we would be at the 1 million that I had started at the start. You can see that uh, the 3,000 3, is roughly the uh, median in here, maybe. And so that gives you an idea of that the numbers we put up originally are are uh, very, um, are, are supported by the, uh, this data. So with that, I think I mumbled enough, but now we'll go to Carol. Um, pe pe people should realize that this is the sort of final page, if you're familiar with uh, Excel spreadsheets, um, this is just one page of a five or six page complicated Excel spreadsheet uh, in which we looked at specific wells, ranges of production declining at certain rates over different years. Um, you know, at each of the points in the spreadsheets, you need to make assumptions. Uh, and this is the sort of the summary of what what might come. Uh, we did all of this. We made all these calculations at a point when the estimate by the USGS, uh, United States Geological Services, and the EIA, the Energy Information Administration, is that agency. Um, uh, was estimating a certain amount of gas in the Marcellus Shale. They have since approximately halved, I believe, their estimates of recoverable gas. So again, we've gone back and tried to build that in a little bit, but um, these numbers could be all over the place. But you know, as, as Don showed you, even if you double or triple um, the numbers, they're not way up where uh, where industry would like us to believe they all will be. And they are, um, the, the, the estimated unit of production value is calculated based on a five-year running average of what the prices the industry is seeing. Uh, so those are falling. So at the end of all of this, do, do, do we expect to see a net income to our towns? Uh, will uh, the county or municipalities, we were looking in Tompkins County, but you could look anywhere, um, gain in dollars? And uh, the answer is, it depends. Um, <laughs> and it depends on a lot of things. Um, we looked at, well, what, what has been experienced in other places. Now, Bradford County in Pennsylvania has since seen some more income, but when we were looking in April of, uh, April of 2011, and hopefully they'll release new figures soon, um, they had issued 1,700 permits to drill uh, to that date, of which there were only 240 producing wells. So again, you you know you need to make assumptions about how quickly will they drill in your town, uh, how many of those wells will produce, and how much will they produce before you can uh, go in, into the uh, put put any numbers into those uh, calculators. Uh, we we have heard the Chesapeake, which is the big driller in this area, is moving rigs to other states. Uh, the price influence on production timing. Uh, the industry strategy for the Northeast was developed at a time when the price of gas on the national and international markets was up at $12 a unit. And uh, th sometimes those units are expressed as British thermal units, sometimes they're expressed uh, in cubic feet, but in any case, the order of magnitude, what we're seeing in the, in the order drop, the order of magnitude is such that um, break-even pricing is estimated at four to seven dollars per unit, and the gas price is currently at well, it was at 250 when I wrote this slide, updated this slide, and now then it was down to 232. It may be back up to it was up 220 something. Maybe it's up to 232 now, but it is that that's a very big different big difference. Um, closer to home, uh, just this week, as a result of publicity for this session. I got an email from somebody in the Spencer Van Etten School District 
uh, and this is not Marcellus Shale drilling. This is vertical drilling, existing wells. Um, the production has dropped in the wells in the town of Erin uh, have dropped to the extent that the tax revenue estimates used in this case, it was by the school district, uh, turned out to be in error by the time the tax bills were sent. So if you go back to the uh, time lag chart, we're budgeting in the year before any of this is on this chart. The drilling is happening in that first year. The, uh, the school taxes are determined. The school district is, is estimating and budgeting in year two, which is what the Spencer Van Etten School District did based on the fact that these Aaron wells in the town of Aaron were producing at a certain rate and determined the budget. Well, by the time the tax bill went out, it turned, based on assessments, it turned out that those wells, the production figures that got reported by the DEC back to the assessment department, had come in so much lower that people's tax bills raised by 25 to 40 percent on individual properties. So that's the kind of uncertainty that one can see in, in this market. Um, I'll also point out that the industry models themselves, they make money based on the 20 percent, and this, this is you know, open, uh, you know, this is not a secret, um, based on expect expectations that about 20 percent of the wells that they drill will be the good producers. And their financial models work on that, on that model. Uh, they'll, they'll drill in various towns, 20% of the wells are, are good producers. They make money. Um, uh, you need to make an assessment about how, do you think that your town is in that sweet spot? They don't know in advance where those sweet spots will be. Bradford County, Susquehanna County turned out to be those sweet spots. Uh, if you are in the 80% of towns that either uh, – that, that that aren't in those sweet spots, you will not see the kind of numbers that will support the revenues you've got to expend. And some of your wells, if you're in a town where the wells come up dry, you can see all of the expenses and none of the um, none of the revenue. Uh, if you're a town next to a town that uh, that has well drilling and you don't have any um, under again under the current current system, and we're hoping New York State will go to a system that distributes the income a little bit better. Um, at the state level, from the state level, uh, you you would you wouldn't necessarily see anything. Uh, from further afield, Denton, Texas, reported uh, its assessment department reported last year that uh, there was a 28 percent decrease in assessed value of property over a 10-year period, even during a period in which there was a 53 percent increase in uh, production of gas. So you had 53% more gas coming out of the ground, but the assessment rolls, the, the, the total value of property in the county because of market forces ended up decreasing uh, to the extent that they were having trouble meeting their revenues. So it, it's a complicated question. Uh, I think we've covered all of that. So the process uh, that New York State will go through, we brought, we started to bring this information to New York State a year ago in the spring. Um, as we went to talk to people in New York State in the governor's office, in uh, the legislative offices and administrative offices, uh, we were told, and at that point there was a lot of talk about the EIS and environmental factors, and there were, we, they were willing to engage in conversation on that, but on this taxation items in particular, they were very clear that they were not ready to talk about that, that we should be assured that when they were, they would be coming to the public to engage in a discussion. 
uh, and that we would be some of the first to know. I mean, they were interested and intrigued by some of these things. We, we didn't have this much detail by a long shot, but we certainly had the time lag information. Don saw that immediately and uh, was patient as our committee went got uh, involved, involved in the mortgage lending issues, which were quite timely, and some of the other issues that, that, that were needing to be addressed by the EIS process. And uh, then when, so we, we didn't have as much to talk about, but they said that they would come back to us because what we were talking about was intriguing. And we never heard back. The next that we saw was more recently when the Gannett newspaper from Albany, the Albany Time Union, uh, reported that eight options had been presented to the governor's panel on, the advisory panel on, on gas drilling, um, in or, eight options for state level new fees and taxes and asked to review them. Now, that panel hasn't met since that was presented. We have sent the paper to them. We've already heard back. We heard back literally within a day or two from three members of that said eight-member panel um, who are interested. We're hoping to get to go and present this to the panel directly, uh, but we can't be the only ones. We would like to see an open, transparent process for going through all of this, for discussing uh, with public feedback. We'd like to see a process whereby the options under discussion are presented to the public, that the kinds of people who work with our committee but know this on a state or theoretical level uh, have the chance to weigh in, have, have the chance to go in front of hearings uh, and weigh in and talk about uh, the pros and cons of the various methods of cost recovery. We think that's important to do and with the time frame to do it. Property and land valuation. People ask us a lot, you know, will my property go up or down? I hope it's become apparent that we can't really predict that at this point, that it will be uneven, uh, and that uh, the stuff we haven't talked about today that others talk about is the boom bust cycle. So that even for those towns that see the boom, that see the kind of uh, higher numbers that are possible under these scenarios, uh, even under the current scenario not changed at all, eventually see a bust and, uh, and shouldn't be building the, the money into their operating budget. So our conclusions. New York State must establish a severance tax and higher permit fees. Uh, that Both of those must be shared with local governments. We need to establish accurate, verifiable methods to measure the output of gas. We should be looking at that UPV formula in a public, open, transparent way. We need to address the time lag and, and not start issuing permits. And we ask your towns, uh, you personally, uh, this shouldn't happen. This shouldn't be allowed to, to be discussed at the state level. There's got to be an open discussion. And like the other issues associated with new activities, any new activities, feel free to weigh in to the governor, to the panel, uh, to write letters, to if you're a municipality, if you're an official, uh, pass resolutions weighing in, spread the word, and you can go to our website for the actual, uh, what is it, 15-page version of the paper with more detail here. So thank you. Can I turn this on? So we have uh, 20 minutes or so for questions.